The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Historian Douglas Brinkley writes, usually one day in a century rises above the others as an accepted turning point or historic milestone. It becomes the climactic day or the day of that century. Quite honestly, I beg to differ with him as I think about all that we have already experienced in the past 20 plus years. 9-11 was a huge turning point for our country. This pandemic has been a history-making event on multiple levels. January 6th of this year, another day that will be remembered in infamy marks what is sure to be another turning point in our country. And I have a feeling there will be more turning points on the horizon before this century comes to an end. Points in time that will bring about major change and cause us to move in different directions. Turning points cause global change, change within an entire culture or if the turning point is in one's own life, it can cause us as individuals to change the direction we are going. I know this because I have experienced personal turning points in my life and the fact that I am here today is the result of some of those turning points. In today's readings, we find people facing life-changing turning points. In our reading from Genesis, God establishes the covenant with Abram and tells him he will be the father of many nations. Even though Abram is already 99 years old and does not yet have any children. Now think about it. What a surprise. As my friend says, old Abe was more ready for the nursing home than for the maternity ward. (laughs) Yet, God makes it clear to Abram and Sarai that they will become parents. This is truly a turning point, and God marks this event by giving them new names. God says, your name shall now be Abraham and Sarah. 
for I have made you the ancestors of a multitude of nations. This truly was a life-changing experience for them and a turning point for the world because God's faithful, everlasting covenant with Abraham's descendants is established. Today, we also come to a turning point in the Gospel of Mark. In fact, it is the central turning point or a pivot point in Mark's Gospel. Just before today's reading, Jesus has asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? In response, impetuous Peter gets all excited and professes that Jesus is indeed the long-promised Messiah. And now, Jesus immediately begins to tell his disciples what being the Messiah is all about, what his ministry will look like. He says, it is necessary that the Son of Man proceed to an ordeal of suffering, be tried and found guilty by the elders, high priests, and religious scholars, be killed, and after three days rise up alive. Well, Jesus' words to the disciples are devastating. His words shatter and obliterate the disciples' preconceived notions of everything they expected a coming Messiah would do. So as reactive Peter hears this, immediately he backs away and he rebukes Jesus. Jesus' words simply destroy the glamour of following a long-expected Messiah. This is certainly not the kind of life Peter wants to undertake. While Jesus seems to be the Messiah, the Jewish people had never expected a leader who must suffer and die. That was simply ludicrous and irrational. Who in their right mind chooses to proceed to an ordeal of suffering, as Jesus says he is doing? And who in their right mind wants to even follow a leader who is on his way to die? This comes as a complete surprise. Nothing they have experienced has prepared them for Jesus to say he's going to suffer and die. And what is even more appalling is that Jesus is telling them if they want to be his disciples, they must deny themselves and take up their crosses and follow him. No, this is not what they had hoped for. Now, lest we judge Peter too quickly, we need to take a serious look at ourselves. Jesus' words are just as hard for us to hear. You see, most of us choose religion and come to believe things deeply because we feel they are good for us. We like a religion that makes us feel good. We like a faith that fits our comfortable recreational lifestyles. We like a faith that makes us feel happy, loved, at peace, and free from the challenges of life around us. In other words, we want a religion that will make us healthy, wealthy, and wise. We want to follow a strong God who heals our illnesses, provides ample prosperity, guarantees security, and urges our sports teams on to victory. Suffering does not fit into that plan. Quite honestly, if any one of us is offered a life of suffering versus a life free from suffering, you can bet your bottom dollar we will choose the one that is pain free. Yet, this is where we must get very honest about the Christian life. Christianity is not about living an easier life living a life free from pain, or believing in a God we can turn to as our personal Santa Claus to help solve life's problems and give us all we want. 
Quite frankly, following Jesus is often going to make our lives more challenging and complicated. Jesus' words to his disciples are hard and rather extreme. The disciples had thought the Messiah would offer security, protection, and make Israel great again. But now, Peter and the other disciples are learning that faith in Jesus is not about the elimination of risks, the preservation of life, or the ability to control. Instead, Jesus asks Peter and each one of us to risk it all, abandon our lives, and relinquish control to God. That is what Jesus is doing, and he expects nothing less from those who would follow him. The way of Christ is the way of self-denial. It is the way that reminds us our life is not our own. Our very lives belong to God. The way of Christ reminds us that we are not in control. God is the one who's in control. Our life is not about us. It's about God. And you know, there is some great freedom in knowing and living this truth. Freedom to become fully alive. Through living Christ's way of self-denial, our falling down becomes rising up. Losing becomes a way of saving. And death leads to resurrection. As long as we believe our life is about us, we will continue to exercise power over others, try to save ourselves, control our circumstances, and maybe even rebuke Jesus. Jesus rarely exercised power over others or tried to control circumstances. He simply made different choices. And for followers of Jesus, discipleship, is about the choices we make. Jesus chose to give in a world that takes, to love in a world that hates, to heal in a world that injures, to give life in a world that kills. He offered mercy when others sought vengeance, Forgiveness when others condemned, and compassion when others were cruel or indifferent. He trusted God's abundance when others said there was not enough. With each choice, he denied himself and showed God was very present. At some point, these kinds of choices will catch the attention of, and quite likely offend, those who live and profit by power, control, and looking out for number one. People who are offended will not deny themselves. They will react. Jesus said they would. He knew that he would be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes. And it happens in every age for those who choose the path of self-denial. When it happened for Jesus, he made one last choice. He chose the cross and resurrection over survival. Every single day of our lives, we face choices. And some of those choices are real turning points. In today's reading, Jesus says to each one of us, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. Don't run from suffering. Embrace it. If any of you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Follow me and I'll show you how. 
Self-help is no help at all. Self-sacrifice is the way, my way, to saving yourself, your true self. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? What could you ever trade your soul for? The point at which Jesus says this to his disciples is the turning point in Mark's telling of the Jesus story. And it is the turning point for each of us in our life of faith. The words Jesus speaks to us today present the big defining choice for every Christian. If any of you want to follow me, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. Amen.